one everyday application of modular arithmetic and remainders is in error checks. So these can be used just to check at the first glance the validity of credit card numbers. Doesn't mean that the number belongs to the person who's allegedly should be allowed to use it, but it does mean that websites or check or shops can very simply check and say, no, this is not a valid number, we don't need to check any further. And that's because credit card numbers contain a check digit. So most of the digits of the card are conveying some information about whose card it is, whose account it is, but there's an additional digit that doesn't contain any information that couldn't be inferred from the other information, but has to take a given value for that card number to be valid. And it's similar to what's done with physical media. So looking for error correction in things like a CD or a DVD, which might have been scratched, leading to some either incorrect reading or some missing information. But if there is some redundancy in there, sometimes the system can work out what that would have been from the other information. So I'll do the example of an American Express credit card number, which is 15 digits long. Now, the first 14 of those digits can tell you what country the card was issued in, which bank issued it, to which account. The 15th digit is not conveying any more information, but it is the check digit to confirm whether or not um, the previous 14 digits are valid with this other digit. And this particular error check system, there are various, but this one uses the Loon algorithm, which is based on modular arithmetic, mod 10. So basically the remainder when divided by 10 or effectively the last digit in base 10. So this is named after Hans Peter Loon. Unsurprisingly, he's the one on the uh, right of this image. That's just a an old uh, punch card on the left. Uh, clearly, he was the human being and not the punch card. But the Loon algorithm is calculated by adding twice the first, third, fifth, seventh, up to the 13th digits to the sum of all of the first 14 digits multiplying that by 9 and then taking the remainder mod 10. So in this case this is an image I found on I believe American Express's website where they've got a credit card number 375987654321001 and I just want to check is that a valid card number. So in other words, is the check digit at the end of one correct for a card that begins 375987654321001? Well, if it were, the Loon algorithm would say add up all of those digits, 3 plus 7 plus 5 plus 9 and so on, and then once I've added those 14 digits, Add twice the first digit, so 6 instead of 3, then add twice the third digit, so 10 because of 5, then add 16 because double the 8, which is the fifth digit. Once I've got that, multiply it by 9 and work out the remainder when divided by 10. When I do that, I add up all the numbers, then I add up twice the odd numbers and I get 116. I multiply that by 9 and I can see straight away that a number which ends in a 6 multiplied by a 9 will end in a 4. So will be equal to or equivalent to 4 mod 10. So in fact, this is not a valid credit card number 
The 15 digit card number that would be valid starting 3759 would have to end with check digit four. So this example with check digit one is not a valid number. There's another quite neat application of um, modular arithmetic for working out calculations with large powers. Now, three to the power 1000 is an absurdly large number. But I can still work out its remainder when divided by 34. Now, I'm not even going to begin to try and calculate three to the power 1000. But I can relatively quickly work out what that value would be or its remainder when divided 34 divided into it repeatedly. And the argument goes by starting by writing a thousand in binary form. So binary form by two, two forms, two digits. So binary values can be zeros or ones, two states, in the same way as the decimal way of writing something has 10 possible values in each digit, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. For the 1,000, I can write as 512 plus 256 plus 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 8. So in other words, 1,000 is 2 to the 9 plus 2 to the 8 plus 2 to the 7 plus 2 to the 6 plus 2 to the 5 plus 2 to the 3. Now, why would I write it in that form? It's not instantly obvious at this point. But if I write instead of having 3 to the power 1000, 3 to the 512, times 3 to the 256, times 3 to the 128, and so on, then I know that the remainder of 3 to the 1000, when divided by 34, can be split into the remainder of 3 to the power uh, 512 when divided by 34 times 3 um, to the 256 when divided by 34. If I take all of those, take the product of those, and it should be equal to the same thing. But this at this stage is not obvious why this is advantageous. So if I start to work it out, well, the remainder of 3 when divided by 34 is 3. The remainder of 3 squared when divided by 34 is 9. Then going up another squaring power, 3 to the 4 is 81. 81, 81's remainder when divided by 34 is 13. Square that again, so 3 to the 8's remainder when divided by 34 will be 169's remainder, which is 33, and so on. We still haven't quite established at this point why there is any advantage to doing this. Now this is where the big advantage comes in. Because what I see is that 3 to the 16 mod 34 is the same as 3 to the 8, mod 34, times 3 to the 8, mod 34, and if I need to take that remainder, mod 34, then what I find is that that is equivalent to 1. So I know that the remainder of 3 to the 16, when divided by 34, leaves a remainder of 1. So it also means that any larger power if 3 to the 16 gives me 1, then all of the other ones will give me the 32nd power, the 64th power, the 128th power, the 256th power will give me 1, 1 squared, 1 to the 4, 1 to the 8, whatever. That all of those will equal 1. So once I've found uh, the equivalent of the multiplicative identity, life becomes easy. So this 3 to the 1000 which I know is the same, uh, leaves the same remainder as 3 to the 512, multiplied by the remainder of 3 to the 256, multiplied by the remainder of 3 to the 128, and so on. But I know 
straight away that the remainder, mod 34, of 3 to the 16, or 3 to the 32, or 3 to the 64, or 3 to the 128, will all give a 1. So I know that this remainder will be 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times until I start to get down to the bit I have to calculate. And I know straight away that the remainder of 3 to the 1000 is just going to be the same as the remainder of 3 to the 8. Now that can say can be calculated much more easily. And in fact, I've already done it. I did it on the previous slide and I already worked out that 3 to the 8 leaves remainder 33. So because 3 to the 8 leaves remainder 33, I know that 3 to the 1000 leaves remainder 33.